Let's take a look at the pingable envelope generator from 4MS. I'm using the software version that comes in the Softube modular, but if you have the hardware version, the controls are pretty much the same. All right, so let's take a quick look at my basic patch that I've set up here. So I have MIDI data coming in to trigger this envelope generator and also the MIDI note being converted to CV to control this oscillator. I'm using the sawtooth output into the filter here. 24 dB per octave low pass filter going into the VCA and that output is going in to the main output of the plugin. I also have this ADSR output that is controlling the overall amplitude of the sound. All right, so let's introduce the 4MS peg into this patch. So currently this is what the patch sounds like. Now the pingable envelope generator kind of has two envelopes and these envelopes can also act like LFOs. Let's just work with the red channel here. So the red channel is one envelope and then the blue channel is another envelope. There's an envelope output here. I'm gonna connect this to the CV1 input on the VCF so we can introduce some filter cutoff modulation. So how this envelope works is you need to define a ping time. So kind of like a tap tempo feature, you have to tap on this button to define how long the envelope is gonna be. And you can see it's pulsating. So that is the length of my envelope that's gonna be generated here. And that's specifically on the red side. So let's have a listen to this. I'm playing notes on the keyboard. You're not hearing any filter cutoff movement. In fact, it sounds really filtered. And that's because we need to gate this envelope, just like an ADSR that needs a gate. This pingable envelope generator also needs a gate to tell it to start doing its thing. So I'm going to take an additional gate output from here and plug it into this asynchronous gate input here. So as soon as I do that, and now when I play a note, you can hear the filter cutoff movement. Now this is the shape of the envelope. So there's a ramp up and ramp down, kind of like a triangle shape. But we're only hearing the ramp up. We're not hearing the, we're not hearing the ramp down. And that is because the ramp down stage in this asynchronous mode, the ramp down stage occurs on the note release. So when I release the note, that's when you hear this second half of the envelope. And unfortunately, currently my, my ADSR doesn't have much of a release, so we're not really hearing the sound because the volume is being cut off there. So let me crank up this release here so we can really hear this release stage. So that's the first half, and I'm gonna let go. Now you can hear the release stage, or the second half of the envelope. Another important thing to remember is that this pulsating is not actually when the trigger will happen. Just the gap between each pulse defines the length of the envelope. Since we're in this async mode, I can trigger this envelope whenever I want. Right, it doesn't have to synchronize with this, but this just defines the overall length of the resulting envelope. We can change the shape. We can go for this ramp down shape instead. Again, you only hear it on the release stage primarily. If I switch to this shape here. And of course we have all those in between positions as well. We can scale the output of this envelope. So when it's cranked up to the maximum, we're using the full range of the envelope. We can tone it down. At zero, it's pretty much off. And we can also invert it. We're not sharing the inversion because it's going into the lower value here on the filter cutoff and there's nothing much happening there. So let's pull this up. Now we can hear the movement where it goes back and comes back up. So this acts like an attenuverter. We can attenuate the signal and also invert it. We can also make the signal bipolar. So currently the modulation starts at the set position and goes up, comes back down. That's assuming it's on the positive. On the negative, it starts at that set position, goes down and comes back up. 
I'll leave it into the positive state and let's turn on bipolar. In this case, what's going to happen is that the modulation is going to happen on both sides. It's going to go up and come back further down. And hopefully you heard the difference there. All right, um, let's try, instead of async, let's try the quantized version. So in the quantized version, we are actually going to follow the pulsation of the ping here. So when I play a note, I'm holding down the note, and you can hear the pulsation. It's basically acting like an LFO, constantly modulating the filter cutoff. That's in bipolar mode. I like this curve option over here. So this is a normal triangular shape. You can curve it further. That's an interesting shape there. On the left we have a few more shapes. This parameter is stepped, unlike this Q where you have a continuous control. All right, another option we have here is a ping division slash multiplication. So right now in this equal mode, we're basically following this rate here or this length. But I can double it up. So we essentially get double time, three times as fast, four times as fast, and so on. On the other side, on the left side, we have the division option. So now it's twice as long, three times as long, so on and so forth. So between these four knobs and the bipolar button, and switching between quantize versus async mode, you get a lot of flexibility in the resulting modulation shape that you are using here. Now I can also disconnect this, not have any gate, and just turn on cycle mode. So now when I play a note, you can hear it's just automatically being gated. So essentially we're just following the pulsation of this ping. Now this pulsation can also be modulated with an incoming signal here. So for example, I'm going to add an LFO. And I'm going to take a slow moving LFO, sine wave LFO, and plug that into the trigger for the cycle mode here. So pretty interesting. Hopefully you're noticing how when this cycle is on, this cycle is off. And when this cycle is on, this cycle is off. In fact, instead of using an LFO, we can also just gate it. So I'll take an additional gate output from here, plug that in here. See how we alternate between the two? Now you don't have to have it alternate, you can just turn off this LED. So now when I trigger the gate, both get triggered at the same time. But it's nice that we can enable this alternation feature. Now currently we're not using the second envelope, so we're only hearing this in action. But let's say I'll take this envelope here, what can we modulate? Maybe we can modulate the pulse width or maybe the pitch of the oscillator. Let's do CV2 here. I'll tone down the range so it's not too dramatic. Now you notice we're not really hearing anything because of this gating mode. When I release a note, yes, this cycle turns on, but I've released a note, so you're not going to hear anything. So let's try this. Instead of using the gate, I'll disconnect that. Let's use our LFO over here. 
Let's speak it a bit faster. All right, so this cycles. Now, nothing's happening because we haven't defined the length. So let me tap over here to define the length for the ping or the length for this envelope. I'll increase CV2 here, maybe hear that a bit better. There we go, now you can hear it. This could be faster. Make it a bit more dramatic. That's interesting. Turning on bipolar, we get a wider range and it goes lower, the pitch of the oscillator that is. Let's now explore some more of the inputs and outputs we have over here at the bottom. So we do have a plus 5 volt version of the envelope. So the main envelope has a plus 10 range. So if we modulate the filter cutoff here, I'll just cycle this. Get a nice wide range there, switch over here. Lesser range. Now bipolar mode does not work with this. We only get the 0 to 5 volt range. All right, I'm gonna plug the main 10 volt range envelope back in to modulate the filter cutoff. Let's talk about end of rise and end of fall. EOR stands for end of rise. So this envelope shape is rising up and then at that peak point, we can send a trigger that comes out of this end of rise. Same for end of fall. When we reach the end of this envelope, we can send a trigger out here. So for example, I can use this end of rise to trigger an external ADSR, or I can trigger this guy over here, the blue envelope. So let's plug it to the quantized version. So it will repeat. Now it is pulsating as well. If I disconnect this, you can see that this stops pulsating. It's end of fall. Uh, it has a half rise, so 50% position of the rise. So let's do this. I'll take this envelope output and let's say we'll modulate the pitch of the oscillator over here. All right, um, I'm gonna take the end of rise here and plug it into the quantize input. So you can see this pulsating away. Tone down the scaling here a bit. Speed this up. Let's actually flip this. Yeah, so we'll hear it a bit more. So basically, as soon as we reach the fall stage, this guy triggers, and then it modulates the pitch of the oscillator. That's why you're hearing it only on the second stage of the envelope. Interesting results you can get with this. Let's try the end of fall instead. Slightly different result. Let's do a positive version. All right, now we can further modulate some of the parameters over here. So I can modulate the ping division slash multiplication knob with a signal going in here. I can modulate the skew with a signal going in here. And lastly, I can also CV in a signal on the curve to modulate the curve. Let's use our LFO over here to do that. So I'll take a sine wave output and plug it into the div input here. Let's disconnect this for a second, or I'll just scale it back down to zero so it's not doing anything. That's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. 
What if we modulate this skew? So this knob here, I'll set it in the center so it'll have a nice wide range going back and forth there. And lastly, we can also modulate the curve. And let's use the blue envelope instead this time. I'll disconnect this from here and plug it into curve. So all this can lead to some interesting change in modulation, so you get a bit more variety as opposed to the same modulation shape again and again. Alright, so all this is fun. I'm going to disconnect these over here. I want to talk about this OR output over here. So instead of using the red envelope output over here or the blue envelope output over here, we can use the OR output, which is a combination of both envelopes. Let's try it out. I'll disconnect this and plug the OR to the CV1 on the filter. Now we're not hearing the second one because the cycle is not on and nothing is triggering it. So this also creates a unique shape as we're essentially combining the two envelopes to create one new hybrid shape. Let's do something interesting. I'm going to end of rise here, plug it into the trigger input here. Actually, before I do that, let me turn off this one and just leave one on. Plug that in there. It's basically going to alternate between the two. And what that means is we're basically going to alternate between these two envelopes, right? Because if we're not using any of the inputs here, the quantize or the async gate inputs, we have to rely on cycle for these envelopes to run. So now whenever you see the yellow LED, you know that envelope is active. <laughs> So as you can see, there are a lot of creative possibilities here with the pingable envelope generator. I hope you have fun with this and stay tuned for more.